Before we get into today's episode, I want to let you know that I'm hosting a live side hustle accountability challenge called the Side Hustle Bootcamp, and you can sign up right now. The Side Hustle Bootcamp is designed to help busy, multi-passionate professionals just like you discover your perfect side hustle and get it up and running. It's a live interactive challenge featuring weekly live check-ins, weekly emails, and a free side hustle guide to follow along with. And in our live check-ins, I'll be teaching you how to nail down what your side hustle should be, plus how to find the right customer for your side hustle, how to test out your side hustle, how to move forward with your side hustle, and so much more. Also, you can have the confidence, the resources, and the support to get started building out your side hustle into a money-making business once and for all even when you don't have a lot of time. So go to sidehustlepro.co slash bootcamp to learn more and save your spot. And it's totally free, you guys. That's sidehustlepro.co slash bootcamp. You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla matthews Akome. So let's get started. This episode is brought to you by Comcast Rise. Comcast Rise is one of the best opportunities for small business owners. It is a multi-year, multifaceted initiative designed to help strengthen small businesses owned by women of color and people of color. To date, Comcast Rise has helped over 9,500 small businesses across the U.S. with marketing, media, or technology upgrades for free, and your business could be next. In February, I myself applied and I received a full technology package for Side Hustle Pro, which included three iPads, two laptops and a desktop, which is a game changer for my team and I. So please do not talk yourself out of this amazing resource. Visit SideHustlePro.co slash Comcast Rise and apply now. Qualifying businesses can apply to receive consulting, media and creative production services from Effective, the advertising sales division of Comcast Cable or or technology upgrades from Comcast Business. Plus, even winners can apply again for a different grant. So go to sidehustlepro.co slash Comcast Rise to learn more and apply. Hey, hey, everyone. It's Nikayla of the Side Hustle Pro Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. This is part four of the Side Hustle Pro Bootcamp series. If you haven't already, make sure you go back and listen to parts one, two, and three, so you know how to get your side hustle off the ground, how to find the right audience for your side hustle, how to actually start doing your side hustle. And now we're going to talk about how to move forward. So I have taken so many notes for this episode. So if you see me looking at my notes, that's why I want to make sure I don't miss anything because this is the most important part about the side hustle journey. This is how you sustain, aka keep that same energy as the energy you had when you thought of the idea and you were so excited. And now that you've put it out into the world, maybe you didn't get the results that you thought you would, or maybe you actually skipped that step and you haven't put it out into the world. And now after listening, listening to these, you're starting to kind of rethink or starting to push out your start date and just rethink if you're going to do this after all. Listen, we can come up with so many excuses not to do our side hustle, but let me share with you nine tips that are going to help you in this process of pushing past your doubts and moving forward. All right, all right, all right. So, Tip number one is to approach this week, this week, like this is the week that you get down to business. You put everything aside, like, okay, we're not thinking anymore. We're not just talking about it anymore. We're actually going to do some things. So things that have helped me when I get into this phase is ignoring my impulse to put it off, ignoring the doubt in my mind and fighting the urge to pick someday far in the future to start and saying, no, that day is going to be today or that day is going to be two days from now, max. Remember that you don't have to wait until everything is perfect to start. When it comes to side hustling, most people do get into an analysis paralysis zone where you start to be a perfectionist and you don't want to put anything out unless it is amazing. But 
that is the easiest way to never launch your side hustle. So let's talk about the quickest way to keep yourself from getting overwhelmed, all right? First of all, get out a notebook. Write down your plan. You have to make the plan to work the plan. So your plan doesn't have to be perfect. Just write down what it is right now that you are planning to do to start this side hustle. Then pick a launch date and work backwards from that date. Then start preparing. So you have to make the plan again and work the plan. If I picked a launch date, for example, when I launched my Nikayla TV YouTube channel, I picked the launch date, then I made the plan. Okay, I'm going to record this amount of videos. I need to have them edited by this time. I'm going to put them out every Sunday on this sequence and blah, blah, blah. Same thing with you. Write down what you're planning to do. Let's talk about tip number two. Tip number two is to do the work, not the fake work, okay? And what this means is stop doing the busy work that makes you feel like you are doing something and you know deep down inside you're not doing nothing. (laughs) You know deep down inside that you're putting off the more impactful tasks that will help you to actually launch your side hustle. So you know how sometimes you already know those things that you wanna do, aka read a million articles, take one more course that's gonna make you better at this side hustle. And you start feeling like you did something because you read that article, you took that course, you signed up for that course. And I'm here to tell you that that actually does not count. We are not gonna count that towards taking action this week. We are only going to count the work that moves you towards your goal and makes you make progress. So to me, things like researching your industry, that is pre-work. It's great and it's helpful, but it's still not the work. To give you an analogy, reading articles about your industry and doing competitive analysis is like taking a pre-workout before your workout. It's still not the actual workout. You still have to do those exercises to see those results, right? So do that work, not the fake work. I can research other content creators until I am blue in the face, but None of that matters if I don't actually create my content. So what counts is things like deciding on a name, like we talked about, researching who my audience is, doing that, um, getting on the phone with them, revising and finalizing who that audience is, testing out my equipment to get started and actually start creating the content. And similarly with your side hustle, whether you're a physical product or your online service, you already know Once you've written down your plan, you already know what steps are actual work steps. So that is doing the work. I've also always been big on just-in-time learning. You might have heard me say this before. What just-in-time learning means, that's just-in-time, not Justin. Just-in-time means that you take it just-in-time to learn what you need to learn to do what you need to do. So, for example, before you launch a podcast, you might take the Podcast Moguls course. Um, Before you launch a course, you might take a course on launching courses, right? You do it right when you're getting ready to do it. Not if you know you're going to put off what you need to do for another year or two years. So do the research, but prioritize the work. Learn, then implement. If you're going to buy, pay for anything in order to do the work, make sure that you're ready to implement right away. It's similarly to that exercise analogy. Take the vitamins, then do your exercise. Now let's get into tip number three. Decide on a schedule. I have a production schedule with everything I do. I keep my schedules in um, a spreadsheet. Sometimes I, I started out using Google Sheets where I would put down when I was going to record an episode, when I was going to reach out to a guest, when I was going to edit that episode. And that has changed throughout the years. I now, you know, use an external editor and, you know, I have a virtual assistant who helps me with guest outreach. So things have changed as I've progressed and grown my side hustle, which I want you guys to grow your side hustles as well. So make sure you are sitting down and making a schedule for your side hustle. What days will you work on it? What time during those days will you work on it? And what exactly will you do? Assign tasks to each day. So for example, for me, Fridays right now are my day to interview people. Those are my days to record. Um, Mondays are days that I do not like to have meetings because Mondays sneak up on you. (laughs) So I make sure that I have meetings on days like Tuesdays, Wednesdays, or Thursdays. And when when I really, really get focused on my schedule, because schedules are subject to change, I limit meetings to one day, if possible, and two days max. So 
Spoiler alert, schedules are subject to change and that is okay, but you can't get anything done if you never had a schedule to begin with. So create a schedule and start to abide by that schedule. Tip number four, affirm that there is room for you. Say that to yourself. Actually say that to yourself. There is room for me. What's for me is for me. I can't tell you guys how many times I say this to myself because it's very easy to look on Instagram, to look on TikTok, to look on social media, YouTube, and to say, ah, they're flourishing. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, I wish I had started that business. Oh, I wish I had done that. There is room for you. What is for you is for you. The reason you're not seeing it yet is because you need to create it and nobody can take that away from you. There's room for you. What's for you is for you and nobody can take that away from you. And I want you to know that right now, at this very moment that you're listening to this episode, the world is making room for you and your business idea. No one has ever, 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 ever seen this done the way you're going to be able to do it. I promise you. So, you know, I like to give myself as an example because guys, I say these things to you because I know this is the process of starting your side hustle because I've been through it, right? And in times when I was getting ready to launch Side Hustle Pro or my Nikayla TV YouTube channel, there were times where, you know, I felt like looking at other content creators like... um man, their YouTube videos are so excellent. I, I'm i not even planning to start with a camera. It's just going to be on my iPhone. Will this be, you know, not as good, not as quality content? And are people even looking for this or do they need another content creator? And I had to say to myself, like, wait a minute, <laughs> you know what? So what if this person is good? After their video is done, their audience needs something else to watch. My audience, my subscribers, my listeners, they subscribe to more than one YouTuber. They subscribe to more than one podcast. So they don't just watch these and are like, oh, I'm never, I'm so satisfied. I don't ever need any more content. People are multifaceted. They need different things. So that in of itself should show you that there is room for you. So get out of that cycle. It's easy to fall into it, but just get out of it. Remind yourself that that you don't just buy one type of chip. Like, look at potato chips. Do you have you only had one type of potato chip in your life? Like, absolutely not. There's room for you. Go down any aisle at Target. Go down any aisle at the supermarket. That's where you should do your affirmations. There is room for you. Go into the app store, go into Apple Music or Spotify. Look how much is out there. So anyway, I'm gonna get off that tangent. All I was trying to say is tip number four, affirm that there is room for you. You hear that? That is the sound of another sale on Shopify, the e-commerce platform with everything you need to run a successful online business. I use Shopify to sell my Side Hustle Pro merch over on SideHustleShop.co. And if you have a signature gold Side Hustle Pro mug, then it came from my Shopify store. I love Shopify because Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere. Whether you're selling gold mugs or candles, start selling with Shopify and join the platform, simplifying commerce for millions of businesses worldwide. With Shopify, you can customize your online store to your brand, discover new customers, and build the relationships that will keep them coming back. Shopify covers all the sales channels to successfully grow your business from an in-person POS system to an all-in-one e-commerce platform, even across social media platforms like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And thanks to 24-7 support and free on-demand business courses, Shopify is here to help you succeed every step of the way. It's how every minute new sellers around the world make their first sale with Shopify, and you can too. This podcast actually started as a side hustle, as you know, and it's now my full-time job and running my shop on Shopify helps make this possible. When you're ready to take your idea to the world, 
do it with Shopify, the commerce platform powering millions of businesses down the street and around the globe. Now it's your turn to try Shopify for free and start selling anywhere. This is Possibility powered by Shopify. So sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash hustle pro. Go to shopify.com slash hustle pro to start selling online today. Shopify.com slash hustle pro. Now, tip number five. Lean into your feelings of vulnerability. It is common. It is normal. It is easy for you to feel vulnerable. Um, Let yourself be vulnerable. You'll be more impactful when you are true to yourself. We're living in an age where it is okay to show your audience or your customers the process behind the product. It is okay to show the person behind the brand. Embrace that. That's one of the reasons I am so open when I'm trying to build something new because rather than running from the vulnerability I feel, I decided to embrace it. I decided to take people along on the process and it will be so beautiful to listen back to this episode when I'm further along. It's so awesome for me to go back and listen to episode one of Side Hustle Pro, which I often do like a few times throughout each year. We're at episode 284 right now, guys. We are going into year six, guys. Like embrace that vulnerability. The first thing I did when I started the show and then that first episode, I talk about, I'm no expert, I'm no entrepreneur, but you know, I'm a side hustler and I'm trying to learn from these women. And then I was able to learn, to grow, to implement what I was learning. And I was able to leave my full-time job and take my side hustle to be my full-time hustle. So this is something that I know that you guys, my listeners and viewers appreciate about me. And so lean into that vulnerability as well in your own side hustle. Tip number six, remind yourself that this is bigger than you. Um, I firmly believe that any calling that is on your heart, any idea that is put into your mind and that you flesh out and decide this is what you want to be your side hustle, I believe that is put there for a reason. And I believe that there's someone out there waiting for what it is that you are going to create. And so therefore it's bigger than you. It's not about you. It's not about your ego. It's not about your vulnerability and your fears. It's actually about you needing to fulfill that calling and you needing to to serve and help people by creating that thing that they're waiting for. They are waiting for you. So tip number six, just keep reminding yourself that this is bigger than you. This is not about you. Um, tip number seven, find a virtual mentor. Tour. Oh, I love doing this. <laughs> Let me tell you, um, the key to the game is not reaching out to people and saying, hey, will you mentor me? Will you be my big sister? Whatever, whatever. No. Start by Googling. Google is our friend. If there's something that I want to do, I Google who is already doing it. Then I look at their results and I identify people who are doing what I see myself doing in six months, in a year, in five years, and I make them my mentor. And you're probably like, uh, Nikayla, how did you get them to be your mentor? Um, Well, here's the secret. I don't need to know them (laughs) for them to be my mentor. They don't need to know me for them to be my mentor. They do not need to know me. They are my virtual mentor, meaning there is so much information out there on this person already. I simply have to take the steps to learn as much as possible about them. I look up every blog post that has ever been written, every podcast interview they've ever done, any article they've been featured in, every YouTube video that they're sharing their story and advice. I go through every one of their social media posts on all platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I am that thorough, okay? And then I look into courses that that person may be teaching. So if there's something that they do that I want to learn and they're already teaching it, that's where my investment dollars are going, right? So I invest in their courses. Now, this doesn't have to happen right away because again, they have so much free content already out there that that is your first step to start with that free content and just devour it, okay? And I'm big, again, on just-in-time learning. So I've said that before. So I'm only going to invest in like the course or something like that once I'm ready to implement that. So get a virtual mentor. You can start that today, okay? I can be your virtual mentor. So many people can be your virtual mentor. And if you're listening to this, I probably fall into that category and you didn't even realize it. So 
That's exactly what I've done with my YouTube channel. Um, I've identified virtual mentors. There, I actually call them my YouTube girls. And Moya always laughs at me when he walks by, and you know, I'm washing the dishes or something, and I'm I have my earpod in and I'm watching YouTube on my phone. And he's like, "Is that one of your YouTube girls?" And I say, "Yep." <laughs> So those are my virtual mentors. And one day I will reach out to them and let them know. But for now, I just, you know, it is what it is. So that was tip number seven, get a virtual mentor. So tip number eight, just do the basics, you guys. Stop trying to do the most when you first launch. There are levels to this. You have to grow into that. Um, Case in point, a recent example, Angel of the Spice Suite, she talks about how for a long time, she just had plain brown paper bags. They weren't branded because first and foremost, her shop is a spice shop. So she prioritized the core product and didn't worry about, oh, I need to look like this or that and, and didn't waste money on things that were not moving the business forward. It's only once she was able to grow the business and had that um, profit to invest into marketing and branding a little bit more that she then moved bags onto the priority list. So just do the basics when you're first starting out. You do not need every single item to be branded, to, you know, to go out there and spend thousands of dollars designing. No, don't put pressure on yourself to be anything but who you are a new business owner in XYZ space, wherever space you're going to be in being professional, but still learning. You don't have to fake like you've been in business for 50 years when you haven't. Come out the gate and have the basics covered. Once you have a good handle on the basics, then upgrade, okay? So here's what I did. Um, For example, with the Nikayla TV YouTube rollout, I created my spreadsheet of content. Um, One of the things that I had on there was actually creating a trailer for my channel. And as I was about to create it and I was looking up more examples, and then I went on my virtual mentor pages, I couldn't find a single trailer. And even though I could have sworn I've seen one before, I just could not find it. So that's when it clicked to me that that was not me doing the basics. The basics would have been me focusing on my core content, but instead I was trying to do something glossy and fancy because I thought that would make me look more professional, look more um, proficient at YouTube. And what I was actually doing was taking time away from my core content. So Just do the basics and not only are you maximizing your time, but you're focusing on what is most important. Tip number nine, limit the opinions, okay? Limit the opinions that you ask for. Um, One thing about me is I don't spend a lot of time asking people their opinions about what I'm going to do. And it's one of the reasons I'm able to move forward with my ideas more quickly. Um, Now, don't get this confused with the researching your audience lesson, because remember, that was a specific targeted exercise where you are only reaching out to people who are going to be in your target audience anyway. So the thing with asking for opinions is there's so many people ready to give opinions and they would never be your target customer anyway. You know, I may share my excitement with people and I might run it by my trusted inner circle just so they can thought partner with me, aka help me think as big as possible. However, I never approach others for their opinion as if I need their blessing or permission to move forward or, you know, waiting for them to, you know, have their eyes grow big and say, that is an amazing idea because nine times out of 10, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. People, we're not giving your vision. They're not you. So they're not going to see it. And the only thing that asking them their opinion will do is have them, you know, rain on your parade and you don't want that. (laughs) So I never approach with those cross fingers, hoping for them to love the idea so I know whether or not to move forward. No, no, no. Um, When you care too much about others' opinions, it really prevents you from moving forward because you know what you want to do. You know the reasons you want to do it. But now you're hesitating because you have some random friend's opinion that 
doesn't have the vision, doesn't even work in this space, has never launched a product or service in this space, has no basis to have this opinion whatsoever, but you have their opinion stuck in your head now. Why? Just limit those opinions. Um, Unless you're talking to your exact ideal customer, which you have identified through research and understanding your target market and going through the exercise that we talked about in part two of the bootcamp, then there's not a lot of talking that needs to happen. Um, Yes, you can talk to people like potential vendors, potential manufacturers, or fellow business owners in your field who have wisdom to share, but this is not to get their opinion or on if you should start or not. That That's not what you're doing that for, okay? You have to have the confidence in yourself and you have to have the faith that you were given this idea for a reason. And the fact of the matter is you will get better over time. So you have to have that confidence in knowing that. And remember too, that the more opinions you open yourself up to, the more likely you are to talk yourself out of doing things. So this path is all mental. It's completely mental. You have to affirm yourself constantly. And what happens when you seek too many opinions is rather than affirm us, people like to speak their fears over us. And many of these people have never started a side hustle. Um, never truly invested time into it like you're about to. So oftentimes their opinions come from that perspective of just doing a lot of talking and critiquing on the sidelines. I keep bringing this up because you'll encounter this at every, every juncture as a side hustler. So you got to be prepared for it. You got to be ready and you have to remind yourself where they are coming from because most times people are just unqualified know-it-alls. Put it this way, Do you think LeBron James goes home after a game, collapses into bed, then pulls up Instagram and Twitter comments of what people had to say about his game, especially the ones who never played basketball or can't play basketball, and see what they have to say about his game? Do you think that's how he gets better? I I don't think that's how LeBron gets better. No, he stays locked in. He keeps the opinions out. He goes over his own game tape. He reviews what he did wrong and where he can improve. He works in conjunction with esteemed coaches that he trusts, his inner circle, um, people who are experts at the game of basketball. And he focuses on working out and getting better with his team. So this is what you can and should do also. So tip number nine, limit those opinions. And with that, you guys, Keep all of those tips in mind as you go on this journey of moving forward with your side hustle, pushing past those doubts constantly. It's going to be a roller coaster. There are going to be highs and lows, but it is so worth it to bring something that you have thought about for so long to fruition, to take that idea out of your head, to move that business idea into a passion project and eventually a profitable business. So I wish you all the luck in the world. Make sure that you're signed up at the sidehustlepro.co slash bootcamp to be a part of the bootcamp officially to get those weekly emails and to also join the Side Hustle Pro Facebook group over at sidehustlepro.co slash Facebook. Talk to you next week. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other side hustlers just like you to find the show. And if you want to hear more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Side Hustle Pro. Plus, sign up for my six foot Saturday newsletter at sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter. When you sign up, you will receive weekly nuggets from me, including what I'm up to, personal lessons, and my business tip of the week week. Again, that's sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter to sign up. Talk to you soon.